Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about gratitude, while we take a look at what you can do to be thankful. It's shout out mode! Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about gratitude. Which is letting others know you see how they've helped you. You do know that a shout out doesn't mean you have to actually shout, right? Yes! Yes? <laughs> it's calling someone out for something awesome they've done. Like, shout out to my mom for making my laundry smell like a fresh summer breeze. One, no shouting. Right. And two, you should learn to do your own laundry. <laughs> shout out to Skylar for encouraging my independence. <laughs> Anytime. Got a lime? A lime? There are sublime. I do not have a lime. Well, thanks for your time. Is everything a rhyme? Or we could make slime. No, that's not what I meant. But in the meantime. You have initiated the Rhyme Time Challenge. Each of you has five minutes to write a shout out to someone who's helped you. Sounds simple enough. In the form of a poem. Not so simple. Huh, I bet I can do it in two. Now you must use the form of poetry written inside your envelope. Go ahead, open them up. <gasps> I got haiku. Five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. It's a breeze. It's not even rhyming. What did you get? I got limerick. Limerick. I've heard it both ways. Yeah, sure. You just rhyme lines one, two, and five, and rhyme lines three and four. No way I can do this in under five minutes. Oh, so I win? Uh, no, that wicked under my skin. Ready, set, it's rhyme time. Time's up, Shakespeare. It's time for the Shout Out Poetry Slam. <clears throat> My aunt is the best. Hugs and a listening ear. I am blue. No more. Not terrible. Oh, yours is better. <clears throat> there once was this teacher, Miss Dart, who saw fractions weren't one of my smarts. So she helped me to bake a fab chocolate cake using fractions to measure the parts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What is it with rhyming anyway? Rhymes help your brain by providing a structure for acoustic coding. This means it is easier to process words and sounds for memory storage and later retrieval. Thank you, mysterious and disembodied announcer voice. You're welcome. Speaking of thanks, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians is one of the 21 letters in the New Testament. The leaders of the early church wanted to teach Jesus' followers what was true, and they often wrote letters to do that. The Apostle Paul sent one of the scrolls to the believers in the church at Thessalonica, in what is now the country of Greece. Paul and his friends had started the new church during Paul's second missionary journey. But after a few weeks in the city, Paul and his friends had been forced to leave when a mob came looking for them. Paul was still concerned about the believers in Thessalonica. So a few months later, he sent a friend Timothy to go check on them. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Paul and his traveling companions had made it out of Thessalonica unharmed. But even before Paul left, some of the new believers there had been dragged from their homes and accused of disobeying Roman laws. They had been forced to pay money to city officials. Paul was understandably worried about them. Timothy, I need you to go back to Thessalonica and see if the believers are okay. Make sure they're still following Jesus. I want it. Timothy made the trip back to Thessalonica, where he stayed for a time. Then he returned to Paul, who had moved on to Corinth. 
They're staying strong in faith and in love. <laughs> yes. They want to see you again. Oh, that's great. I wish I could go back right away. But Paul couldn't leave the work he was doing in Corinth, so he decided to send Timothy back with a personal letter. Uh, tell them, brothers and sisters, you are loved by God. We know that he has chosen you. Paul encouraged the believers that God knows the end of the story and that no matter what they were facing, God would give them strength to persevere. Paul closed by telling them this. Give thanks no matter what happens. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. Okay, think about this. The new believers in Thessalonica didn't have it easy. Many of them faced insults and were forced out of their work or even hurt. And yet, one of the most important things Paul wanted them to do was give thanks. What? Well, Paul's challenge wasn't just for the new believers. It applies to us too. People may not be making fun of you for your faith, but just like the Thessalonians, you do face difficulties and frustrations. Maybe you're having a terrible time understanding math this year, or at home your parents are arguing a lot. Maybe you found out you have food allergies and you have to stop eating your favorite foods. Maybe you have to move in the middle of the school year, or no one picks you for their team in PE. These are all tough things, but here's what Paul wrote. Give thanks, no matter what happens. You don't have to feel grateful for the hard thing, but you can be thankful that it's a chance to depend on God. You can thank God for making you more like Jesus through this situation. You can also choose to take a deep breath and look around at the rest of your life to find things you can be grateful for. Mom cooked a special dinner just for you. You made a really cool project in art class. You and your sister got along great this afternoon. You have a roof over your head and a place to sleep. And you're taking one breath after another because God made you and gives you every single breath. Paul went on to remind us of the number one reason we have to be grateful. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. Without Jesus, we would be far from God. But even though we were the ones who turned away, God made a way for us to return to relationship. God sent Jesus to live among us as a human being. Jesus gave up his life for us. And when God raised Jesus back to life, everything changed. When we follow Jesus, we can live with God forever. And even more, Jesus wants to be a close friend right now. He's a reminder that God loves us always. Let's take one more look at our verse. Give thanks. No matter what happens, God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. No matter what else is going on, you can thank God because God loves you. And someday this broken world will be made brand new. Then we will get to live forever with Jesus. The end. Okay, so that is incredible. But a little hard to hear too. That's true, because it's not easy to be thankful when life gets hard. So, what's our part in the story? Well, you're probably facing something really difficult in your life right now, or you will be soon. And when that happens, thankfulness is probably the last thing you're thinking about. Yeah, when something bad happens, I usually whine about it. Or walk around in a funk. But Paul wrote that we can still choose to be thankful. It's not easy, especially at first, but it is something we can practice. Kind of like you practice piano or soccer. Being thankful is like a muscle you have to work out to get stronger. Exactly. Choosing to be thankful every day can retrain our brain. If you practice thankfulness over time, it will actually make you more joyful, even in tough times. But it helps to start small. Like if the bus is late and you have to wait, you don't have to complain. Yeah, you can look around at the beautiful fall leaves and thank God for them. Or if your mom makes you clean your room. You can be thankful you have a room to clean up. I think you've got it. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Bye. So here's the thing. 
It doesn't have to be a chore. You can always find more. Give one shout out or four. You don't have to keep score. Enough wears the door. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Won't cost you a dime.